and actually that's kind of a sign you can tell they need to be changed is when they they do get stretched out a bit and I'm just trying to push straight down so that it's well seated in there again then assemble And watch your fingers because this door is heavy. <laughs> okay. So, if you were paying attention, you know how this goes together. But sometimes even I forget. Okay. Luckily, you see you have parts here, so they don't go this way, right? So they have to go this way because that's the only way they can fit. And you know, this has a seal and a gasket, so it has to cover that opening, right? So that all makes sense. So if you situate it this way, and this is why it's easier to work on the table, um, then this part just slips over. And there's a little notch there, so you do want to make sure that it encounters that. And it's a stop so the door doesn't go flying off on, on, onto the ground. And then it's relatively easy uh, if you give it a little support under there and then re-thread the handle on. Maybe. to get it seated. There we go. Okay. And then you want it fairly firm. Okay, now, now that you have all the parts back together, lift this up. And it is possible. It's heavy. And again, without pinching yourself, you insert it on the hinge. And again, if you put in the weight, if you allow the door to sag, you will not be able to put the pin in. Okay, so you have to take the weight off the hinge so that'll slip right in. Hey, does that make sense? And this part stays on, this stays on, so you won't be able to take those off. But this closes it. Okay, and so normally what we would do once we had sanitized all the parts, put it back together again, we would fill this with three quarters full in the freezing chamber with just sanitizer and then we would run a sanitizing cycle for at least five to ten minutes. Okay. Then we're going to move on to the third and final freezer. So now we're going to use the little bench top tailor which chefs can use because it's small but it's also good if you're doing product development and especially for flavoring where you want to test a series of flavors and you don't want to have to wait very long because this takes about 10 minutes to freeze and because it's such a small capacity it's easy to clean and um, again just a very handy machine and so on this particular machine um, you have to add the lubricant actually to a metal part which is unusual but that's just the design and so when you're doing that, not only do you add this, and again, we're pretending you sanitize. So now this goes back here. And again, you have a little hole, so you have to make sure it's going to seat in there. So basically, you can only do that by feel. And you heard that real loud click. Okay, and so that way you can tell that it's seated in there. And now this comes the tricky part. So you put on the two scraper blades and you slip it in there and then you try to line it up as best you can and you have to kind of lift it a little bit so that it actually lifts onto that shaft and then punch it in. So again, it's very flat here. Okay. Then the next thing is, again, we had a gasket. Um, for the door, so we're going to assemble the door first and then we're going to put it on the machine. Okay. So these are the parts and on this one, I have to follow the parts because I don't use this machine often enough to remember where everything goes. But again, many things are intuitive on this because um, 
there's no other way this can be put together and obviously that's done very intentionally so then that way you don't make mistakes and then the other important thing is that you don't run the machine so that it would be unsafe or so that it would be out of alignment I'm trying to figure out where the hole is old pin This is the trickiest part, actually, because you have to kind of feel for where the hole is so it goes all the way through. Where is it? <laughs> Sometimes you just have to start all over again. Oh, okay, so the hole's over here. Hopefully, they lined up. There we go. All right, and so that operates your door. You notice this pin has to interact with this because this actually pushes in and so that tells the machine the door is installed. Trying not to lose all the little pieces. These are pretty sturdy. This is really high grade. Um, stainless steel. So if you drop it, you shouldn't break it. But things happen. Push the door in there a little bit. And again, having that pin there tells the machine that you can operate it because the door is on, which is always a good thing to have um, when you're going to run a, a machine with liquid, is to make sure that your door is on there so it's in the machine and not on the floor. And there you go. So this operates a little differently and it has just a baby opening, but it comes down the chute. This is how you get the mix in there. And again, what you would do is, before you ran it, you sanitize the individual parts, pour in some sanitizer, tell us about this full, and then you run it. So speaking of that, we're gonna start talking about the controls because this is a straight surface heat exchanger. So of course you have two things, you have a motor, for it to run the dasher, but you also have to have a compressor for the freezing cylinder. Okay. So if you're going to sanitize, you don't want to freeze sanitizer because that's not very good. Uh, and plus it'll just freeze your dasher solid. So on this, you have to figure out how it works without turning on the compressor. And each control will have sort of a timing device or a temperature device to tell you how long to run the machine. Sometimes there's an on-off power switch. This one's very simple. You just plug it in. And if I wanted to run sanitizer, I would hit eject. And what that does is it runs the dasher in reverse so that it's circulating the sanitizer, but it's not engaging the um, condenser, so you don't have any freezing. Now, if you hit on auto and you set the timer, then you're going to engage the condenser and you're going to get freezing. 